Hey, so on this uh, new episode of Clone O, uh, we're gonna do the NTSU, the Su Su by Ghostbust Club. Ghostbust Club. I just always think of Ghostbusters, so can't help it. I don't know what it alludes to. Um, I believe the company is out of Spain. It's not like Portugal or... I'm pretty sure it's Spain. Or it's Italy. God, I'll put it in the... Yeah. Uh, it's a unique looking RBA. This one is from 3F8 in China. And, um... Yeah. Alright, here you have it. The NTSU. Now, let's see. It's, it's, so it's like, it's confusing. So this is like from Spain or Italy or whatever. I'm pretty sure it's Italy. Anyhow, but yet they have like Japanese or Asian writing all over it. Um, now they admit, like it's no secret that this is actually made in China, despite the company's, um, you know, the design actually being from Europe. Um, they don't try to hide that. And the price dictates it. I mean, the price is accurate. Um, I think this RBA, the authentic one, brand new, was like 80 or $90. Let's just say between like 70 and 90 Um, so, you know, your typical grub screw stuff. Lots of pins. That's a, that's a, Shitload of pins. Um, let's see if they have any writing on them. I'm not gonna read off every one of them. Oh, well, they don't have writing. Oh no, they do have writing on the base. Um, oh, you can't see that. There's writing on there that is at 2.5. So, yeah, we're looking at a one, a 1.2. A 1.5, so it's a lot of small stuff, 3.5, 4, so it opens up to 4, 2.0, and that was 2.5. So, a good range, indeed. Um, I don't know what to go with, actually. I might put something small in this. Giant juice flow port, or, yeah, juice flow port. Um, it's pretty reminiscent of, like, a mob's juice flow port. Um, it actually kind of looks like that new mob, because um, the new one is like a little more forward facing, kind of like this. Um, you know, there's a lot of RBAs doing this now, and it kind of got popular with the, the hammer and the unknown. It's that like the wick port is like front and center, like facing you. Um, you got a collar, so it'll, so you can dry fire it, um, and build it in wick it. A lot of threads on, uh on your mod the chimney is very short and it's a very big chamber barrel um now they did just come out with a new slam cat version um there's a couple of reviews on it mark todd and ryan have videos on it um but i kind of like it the way it is because that's what gives it that's what makes it unique otherwise it's just like everything else it's this this giant chamber um, so because of that, I don't know, maybe I will put in a bigger coil and a, a bigger, um, pin. The pin in there right now is a three, so you got everything from one to four. Um, we got Phillips head screws, which is great. It's a nice deck. Um, you got little, uh, you know, pieces on the, uh, uh, by the post screws to kind of trap your leads, which is good. Interesting cuts. Looks like it'll be great for laying your cotton down. Um, there's the inside. This had a funny smell to it. I washed it thoroughly, um, and it still kind of had it. I just washed it again, and it seems faint, or I got used to it. We'll find out if it tastes bad in a minute. So the, um... The chimney just pulls right off. Good tolerances on this clone. That's good. 
This might be the same exact thing as the authentic one. I really, I mean, of all the stuff I've done videos on, this one, I've like, I, something in my gut tells me this is the exact um, thing as the authentic. I'm telling you. Um, the tolerances for putting the deck and the top cap on, the chamber on, it's very tough to get. It's it's easy to not be able to line it up, but the good thing is it's not loose. So instead of trying to line it up like this, I kind of start doing it edge to edge like that. And I'm finding, oh wait, I still didn't find it. Let's see, it's tough to line up, but once you get it, it's in like that. And it's in there with a good tightness. Um, it's not gonna fall off too easily, but you're not gonna have a real hard time pulling it off. The only hard thing is just finding it when you want to put it back on. That's the, that was pretty fast. Um, yeah, it could be tough to find when you initially like go to put it back on. That's my only qualm with that. Um, the logo is on both sides, the uh, NTSU. Yeah, so let's see how it vapes. Um, this is one of the more interesting RBAs that have come out this year. Because it's relatively simple, but we haven't necessarily... Oops. We haven't really seen this shape before. It's a, it's definitely a different kind of shape that we're not used to. So let's put a wick in it, a build in it, see what it's like. So be advised, if you take your airflow pin out, um, that does make it so that your, um, your post here is loose. So... See, came right out because I took the airflow pin out. So changing the pin out on the fly is not really advised. All right, so here we are. I already put this in here. It's a, a 0.5 with TOFO. Um, <laughs> again, I see to put all with TOFOs in the cleanse. Okay, so this one side is a captive lead. You have to slide it in through the hole into the slot. And the other side is open, so... Um, and you just kind of have that little ledge to trap the lead. So I'm using my pinky right now to kind of keep it in place. And uh, I don't know how much you can see of this. And then this one is already trapped in there, so I can just screw it down without having to worry about it. Um, sometimes that shit's annoying, and other times it's... On this, it was kind of, actually kind of convenient having that, so I didn't really mind it. Uh, I spaced it out a tiny bit. I'm going to drop it a little. Um, the cool thing about this is because this top cap is so friggin' mammoth, I guess you would never have to worry about um, your coil hitting the top. So that's kind of a pro. And you could probably, and you, because of that, you could probably get a crazy amount of throat hit. You know, I'm going to keep it kind of up. Um, or, uh, I mean, they may say, <laughs> for all I know, you're supposed to put it low, but I, it shouldn't matter. I, I'm kind of curious. I think it would be f interesting to have some extra throat hit. So, um, I put in the, um, the point, or the, the th I'm sorry, the three millimeter airflow. And, uh, yeah, let's, I'm going to use my nice red grip snips here all right uh we are reading 0.5 dead on so this is probably going to go up from dry firing it oh we're getting a weird burn i, I should lower this because it says 26 watts looking good i recommend to anybody after you fire your coils you should also double check the tightness of them. Because what happens, I learned this early on. I kind of overfired that a little bit. I like to not fire my nichrome too much so it can have the, a little bit of that bluing effect. But yeah, a lot of times after you fire it, it actually makes your coil like the, it loosen up. So you may have to tighten it down slightly more after you did the dry firing. And the um, resistance really didn't go anywhere. 0.51 still, so that's that's good. That's interesting. 
No, this is weird. I don't feel like it's... Yeah, why is it doing that? Also, with a mod like this, it may be wise to, after you initially dry fired it, like, unscrew it, get that reading totally um, cleared, and then uh, screw it back down again to see where you're at. I'm looking at this three millimeter pin in here, and it looks like a very small three. It looks more like a 2.5 than me. Um, I think I seen a video, I think I seen Mark Todd's video on this, and I thought he was saying that they were bigger than normal, not smaller. So, I don't know. Um, now it's saying a 0.6. And I'm firing more evenly now. Again, I'm going to check these screws. I love that they're Phillips head screws. Alright, so this whole thing was very strange. Um, my leads weren't cut right, and it was like... screwing up one of my... the wire a little bit. I, I don't know, it was... I couldn't get the fire evenly. It still looks wonky. I had to reset it. And now, and I spaced it a little more, I'm at least burning ev evenly now. But now it's reading a 0.59, so, so much for the resistance going up. Um, but yeah, so let's wick it already and stick it. It is a cut and dry thing, and I, I, I don't know, I somehow complicated it, so leave it to me. It's definitely a lot of cotton. Yeah, sometimes I'll pull the cotton off, like, as I'm bringing it through. Ah, uh, fuck that up. We'll see how that works out. Wasn't my best pull through. Um, Jesus Christ. I've been fucking up a, a few wickings lately. I mean, doing it on camera is never fun, but... Um, not much on this side. It's a big wick port too, so... I can't really cut anything. Uh, it's probably gonna be terribly, but it's all uh, it's all my fault. Um, <laughs> all right, I don't know what to put in it. Um, hmm. You know what? I'm gonna put this Turkish blend in there. That'll be different. Only problem with Turkish, like. Something that it's has something to do with the, the bottles that they use, like for baked and Turkish blend, or baked and M Turk. They like they're the messiest bottles. Like when I turn them upside down, they like always like they drip from other places, like random spots. And every time I use them, and I put it down, like fucking, I that might be all juice bottles, but like fucking volcanic juice just starts coming out of them, like, after I already, I don't know, it's, I'm just rambling, all right, a little dry fire action, I like to do that, and I'll get my, this is the most used tool, I think, in all of, where am I, where am I, this <laughs> screwdriver, is just like my go-to, for everything. So that's a nice little pocket for it to sit in. Yeah, that's not bad. It really sits in there nicely. Now here's the fucked up part. 
I'm trying to put this cap back on nicely. I'll destroy my wick. Oh, that wasn't bad. Okay, so... Oh, it's hanging out on this side a little bit, but we'll just flatten that with my finger. Voila. My mistake, I put a two in there. Not a three. Oh my god. Oh well. It's gonna be a super tight draw for me, but we're running it. Alright, and I'm gonna take this and put it on in. Oh. I do this all the time. It is not a SXK product. It's unbranded, which makes me think that it's, um, you know, actually made by the authentic, whoever makes the authentic anyway. Uh, a little bit of knurling on this, um, on this here uh, collar, which is cool. I'd imagine it goes in with the knurling side, being down, because that's where you would mostly grab it from. All right, I'm gonna put it in the limelight. Ugh, barely fits. Oh my good god! Just fucking focus. All right. See if it works. I'm not sure if this is my authentic limelight tank or my clone limelight tank. Yeah, it's a short one, so it barely fits in there, but it fits. Um, a little bit of gap at the bottom there, but it's in pretty good. Let's check if it works. Okay, here we have it in a st standard... Uh, Will it box because we're gonna will it to work. We got the Ice Planet mission switch on here with the Rafir rocker. All right, BMM tip, Limelight AIO or Limelight Boro. That's all they called it. Here we go. Here goes nothing. Billet box, Doug Dino, and and it works. Uh, point seven. So it was reading point six nine on the mod, and now it's reading uh, point seven. So not much of a change at all there. Um, that's usually a good sign if you can keep it close to what it's reading uh, on a regular mod. Uh, usually the resistances will go up significantly, not significantly, but by like 0.5 or so, it's pretty common. Uh, we're going to have to take that down because that is a, a two millimeter uh, pin in there, which is pretty, well, at least it's reading 0.7 with that two millimeter pin. It should work out pretty good. These are McCool panels, custom McCool panels I had made for me directly by McCool. RIP, wherever you are. He's not dead, I just, he just left the game. Looking pretty. This was always a, a pretty, this is my first Cerakote uh, billet box that I bought. Um, I bought it secondhand. I think I bought it in... January or February of 2021. So, yeah. Um, what do I think? I think the draw is a lot tighter than I would normally have it. That's what I think. Um, no, uh, it doesn't taste bad so far. It could, once I let it sink in for a little bit, we'll see if it starts tasting like metal or anything. But, uh, it's, it's going pretty good. Maybe that will be our thumbnail right there, right? What do you think? Anyhow, it's a pretty looking, I mean, it's striking looking. It's a different, aesthetically pleasing looking. I mean, I'm not big on wording. I like symbols and logos. 
but um the shape i mean of the rba itself is interesting it creates for uh I mean the flavor is good so this is my um i have turkish blend in here and yeah i mean it's tasting pretty good i'm happy with it i would like to try this with a bigger pin because it'll be more what i'm accustomed to and then i could feel like i can assess the draw a little better but we're gonna run it for now that's that and i uh, hope you enjoyed it take care guys